So in this What Is Wednesday, I wanted to talk about ES6 because even just yesterday I saw a thread on Reddit about asking about learning ES6. And now here we are in 2017, soon to be 2018, and even though ES6 is sort of long gone, there's still some confusion over exactly what ES6 is and all of the features that came along with it. So before we get into some of those features, let's talk about what the ES in the ES6 stands for and some of the versions that came before and after ES6. So ES or ECMAScript is actually the base language that JavaScript is based on. You'll see that JavaScript is listed as a major implementation of ECMAScript. So JavaScript actually comes from ECMAScript and therefore that's where the ES name comes from. Now you can read all about the history of ECMAScript on the Wikipedia page here. And you can also see a whole lot about the different versions. Well, in 2008, an abandoned version of ECMAScript as ES4 or ECMAScript Harmony was abandoned due to political differences concerning the language's complexity. Now, since then, a group of several different companies, such as Yahoo, Microsoft, and Google, and other fourth edition dissenters formed their own subcommittee to design a less ambitious update to ECMAScript. Now, a lot of these updates came along and in 2015, we got ECMAScript 6th edition or ECMAScript 2015. Now you may also have heard of this as ES6. Now ES6 was finalized in June 2015 and includes a whole ton of excellent new features for JavaScript. Things that people have been asking for for a long time, such as generator expressions, arrow functions, typed array, collections, promises, and a whole bunch of nice things, right? There are just so many features here that suddenly existed inside of JavaScript. Now you might be thinking, well, ES6, that's it, right? Well, not quite, because in the very next year, ECMAScript 2016 or ES2016, aka ES7, came out in June and also included a bunch of new features. While not as large as ES6, the ES7 features were a welcome addition. And as you could guess, the ES2017 version was soon released the very next year. This included things like a sync and a wait, which has been a huge upgrade to how asynchronous code works within JavaScript. Now you also see the term ESNext. Now ESNext is the name given to the very next version of ECMAScript. And this is going to possibly include some things and possibly not include others. There are certain features like decorators that have been planned to be included in other specifications and have not yet made it into the official ECMAScript spec. Now this doesn't mean that these features won't ever make it into the spec. It just means that they're not here right now. So we got a little bit of the history and the future of JavaScript here and how it pertains to ES6, but what about actually using it today? Because, well, some browsers support some ES Next and ES Future features, not all of them support all of the features. And on top of that, which features do you even need to know? So how can we use these features today? Well, Babel is sort of the de facto way to do it. Now, Babel is simply just a JavaScript compiler. If you've used something like SAS or Stylus for CSS preprocessing, Babel kind of does the same thing where it takes your JavaScript and spits it out into a version of JavaScript that different browsers will be able to understand. You can sort of think of it like an auto prefixer, right? Uh, auto prefixer for CSS takes your CSS and makes sure that older browsers can understand it correctly. Now Babel is doing the same thing and you can see some examples of exactly what's happening in this little video on the home screen. Now the cool thing about Babel is that you can use it with ES Next features or or you can target very specific releases of ECMAScript. And you can even choose which browsers you want it to support, as in which generation of browsers or how far back you want your JavaScript to actually compile to. So why do you need this? Well, like I mentioned before, 
before, even when the spec is released, it still takes time for browsers to implement these new features. And sometimes they already have all of the features in, and sometimes it takes time for users to adopt the latest browser. And because of that, you don't want to be serving a version of JavaScript that those users can't understand. So this is where Babel comes in, and it takes your code and gets you into ES. 2015 JavaScript syntax and beyond. Now, this is also a great place to learn about ES 2015 and what it includes. For instance, if you see learn ES 2015, you can scroll down and see all of the awesome new features, such as arrow functions and how they affect the keyword this classes and allows us to create classes like many other languages have already had. We also have things like enhanced object literals, template strings, which allows us to interpolate our variables into our strings. We have destructuring, which we use all of the time in React. Now there's too many features to go over in their entirety in this video. However, there's some excellent resources you can use to learn about this stuff other than babel.io learn ES 2015. Okay, so now we know how we can use ES6. Let's talk about where you can learn more about ES6 through ES Next features. Because honestly, there's a lot of exciting new features that come to JavaScript every single year. And it's important to stay on top of those because if you let a one version slip by and then another one slip by, you know, maybe five years later, you are now several years behind on features that have been added to the core of JavaScript. A free resource would be the Luke Hoban ES6 features repo, which shows you a basic overview of all of the features and tells you when and how you would use them. This is a great place to really truly get a handle on what's new. If you're looking for something more tutorial-esque, you can check out es6.io and you can learn from Syntax.fm co-host Wes Boss as he teaches you all of the new features in ES. S6. This is a great series, and if you're looking for a premium learning experience, this is definitely a great place to get that. If you'd like to help support this channel, please click on the link in the description if you're going to purchase ES6 for everyone. In addition, if you're interested in learning ES6 features in the context of React, you can use React 16 for Everyone, where we actually go over not only ES6, but ES6 through ES8 features, and we teach them in the context of React as if it was just normal JavaScript. So instead of saying, hey, this is a new feature, we're talking about, hey, this is how this works, and this is how you should do it from now on. So stop thinking about ES6, ES7, ES 2015, ES Next, and start thinking about the current version of ES or JavaScript. Because these features aren't additional add-ons to JavaScript, they are JavaScript. So if you don't want to learn arrow functions, then you are choosing to ignore a particular part of the language as a whole. So any of these features like that, you'll want to make sure that you have a proper grasp on them so that you know when and how to use them correctly. And while new features in a language like this can be kind of scary, at the same time, the features within ES6, ES7, all this stuff have continually made my life as a developer better. So I can tell you with great certainty that this stuff is going to improve your day to day. So stay up on new releases and make sure that you follow along whenever something new comes out in JavaScript. And if you are extra adventurous, check out some of the ES Next, some of the stuff proposed to come out and see what exactly could be good for you in the future. Or maybe you can try them out using different Babel plugins or presets. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you want to learn more about ES6 in practical React, head over to store.leveluptutorials.com and check out React 16 for everyone or become a pro because I'm going to be talking a lot about these new features in every single JavaScript-based tutorial series that I have coming. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.